Um, I wonder now if um, we can hear from Future Learn, uh, who are here to share their thoughts on this. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please give a very warm welcome to Simon Nelson. Thank you. How do you do? Uh, thanks, and uh, thanks for the invitation to speak here. <clears throat> so, um, FutureLearn, uh, I'm CEO of FutureLearn. I set it up about 18 months ago. 100% <clears throat> uh, owned and funded by the British Open University. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've achieved in those 18 months. Um, but we were set up as a response to the emergence of MOOCs. Show of hands, who knows what a MOOC is? Not bad, about half of you. Who's done a MOOC? By the end of this, I want you all to be signing up to futurelearn.com to try one out, please. Uh, so MOOCs uh, are massive open online courses, a phenomenon that sort of developed in the US um, uh, around uh, 2012, which was coined by the New York Times the year of the MOOC. Uh, and they started to capture uh, the imagination in the UK. UK universities started signing up with uh, some American providers, which is why FutureLearn was launched initially as an alternative to that. By the middle of last year, um, we'd gained a bit of traction and appeared on Newsnight, um, and introduced by Jeremy Paxman with familiar enthusiasm. Now, supposing that instead of going to live in some crummy bedsit in pot noodle land, so you can have the privilege of listening to a burned out hack give the same lecture he's been delivering for the last 20 years, suppose instead of that, you could stay at home and hear some of the best lecturers in the world. The idea of MOOCs, massive open online courses, seems to some to promise a new future for higher education, an alternative to an expensive traditional one. Uh, and so the development uh, and the rapid uh, audience growth of MOOCs, millions of people signing up, uh, 18 of the top US universities signed up within the first 12 months uh, to one of the major um, startups. Uh, led many to predict uh, the end of the university as we know it. Uh, my own background uh, meant that this was pretty familiar to me. I spent 15 years at the BBC. Uh, I led all their digital activities, first for BBC Radio, um, dealing with this kind of nonsense, um, the end of radio as we know it, because who would need radio in an era of iTunes and Napster? Uh, and then I moved to head up all uh, digital and online activities for BBC TV uh, when the cries were even more deafening that who would need traditional channels, schedules, um, traditional genres such as documentary now that one had on-demand TV, user-generated content, etc. Um, so I think what's happening in higher education um, is what's happened in these sectors which is there is a fundamental shift going on. The internet is finally hitting this sector in a big way. Uh, but the reaction has been similarly polarized to how it was in TV and radio uh, and other industries, with some predicting the death of everything that's gone before, others rightly sort of dismissing that as nonsense, actually retreating to the other end of a sort of polar spectrum and saying, yeah, but it's just a fad, it's gonna disappear in a few years. Neither are true. Uh, MOOCs are a really, really interesting development for the university sector for higher education. Uh, but my own preference um, in all of those industries has not been to try and scare people uh, into action and into doing something, but instead to focus on the opportunities that moving digital can offer to the higher education sector. And many of them are exactly the same ones I used to preach about to radio program makers and channel controllers, TV program makers and channel controllers. Um, so I'll start off with a transformation in the accessibility and convenience of learning. Uh, so we built our platform from scratch uh, in about six months last year. Uh, and made sure from the outset that it was responsive across devices. It would work as well on a mobile phone uh, as it would on a tablet. Um, actually quite unusual for online learning, which I think for many of us has felt more like filling in a tax return um, than an inspiring educational experience in the past. Uh, so we built FutureLearn to try to bring our university's courses to life with a bit more color and excitement 
uh, and also using um, the power of uh, the digital tools that the web can now uh, enable. Um, so if, you, if and when you sign up to a course on futurelearn.com later on, uh, I'll just showcase a few of the ones from just one of our providers, our founder, uh, at the Open University, uh, how to give a great presentation, basic science, forensic psychology, um, but you'll also go on there, you'll find courses in business, you'll find courses in healthcare, you'll find courses in history, in arts, uh, and um, hopefully you'll find something of interest. Um, and we've designed a platform to make it really, really clear and simple and fun to learn at your computer or on your mobile phone. Um, we've, uh, so that you're always clear how long the course is that you're doing. This is an eight week course how you're progressing within it, what the next step is that you have to do, how well you're doing so far, and just bringing a, a basic understanding of how people learn online, which the Open University has been pioneering for many, many years, uh, to life in a new and hopefully refreshing way. But it's not only accessibility, convenience, this is offering educators whole new creative ways of delivering uh, teaching. Uh, now, one of my favorite courses um, was uh, a course on um, forensic science, Introduction to Forensic Science from the University of Strathclyde. And it sort of uh, sums up the approach we're trying to take with all of our uh, university partners and all of their educators. So we're trying to say, don't just redistribute your existing lectures and teaching materials using the internet as a dumb pipe. Think about this new interactive medium as a new way to engage people uh, and teach them and help them achieve their goals. So rather than just put up a load of lectures, uh, the University of Strathclyde created a murder mystery where each week uh, you would unveil a different aspect uh, in the search to uncover who murdered a woman in a car. Uh, they filmed um, this murder scene, not a real one, um, and each week would introduce you to some different aspect of um, DNA testing, fingerprinting, uh, or in this uh, example, uh, blood uh, uh, analysis. As soon as the fingerprint and firearm specialists were finished, the team was joined by a forensic biology specialist who observed and photographed the following blood stains on the passenger seat cover, blood stains on the left side of the driver's seat cover, a pattern of tiny blood spots on the transmission. There's lots more blood. Um, now, every week that went by, uh, you would uncover more clues. And we actually had a sort of live reveal moment in the final week. Um, we made the mistake uh, of scheduling it on Valentine's evening, so we got a lot of complaints. Um, but it was a really fantastic way of encouraging people to progress through the course and get to the end of it and made a very demanding undergraduate level uh, um, course much more accessible and enjoyable. Uh, and they also cleverly took the uh, learning away from the computer, away from the phone and into, in this case, the kitchen. So one Sunday morning my wife came and asked me if we had any vodka in the freezer. Uh, now, I know in Wales uh, that might be normal on a Sunday morning, but in my house that was a bit early. Um, so, uh, sorry, uh, it's offend everyone. Um, it was actually to try and test my DNA and the uh, rest of the family's DNA, uh, a skill that she had learned as part of this course. Um, I'm pleased to say there were no surprises. So, as well as this, though, one of the things that makes us most excited about these uh, new developments in online learning is that we believe the social web has now got to a stage where you can do really, really interesting things with it and encourage people to learn together rather than learn alone. And this has long been a theory of uh, educational technology and educational science promoted by the Open University. Um, so, on uh, every one of our uh, pages, every video, every uh, article, uh, every test, we give the opportunity to join a discussion. We don't send you off to some separate message board as other platforms do. We bring this together in context with what you've just been learning. 
so that actually you can discuss, you can ask questions, you'll have an educator in that social environment, and hopefully uh, that's catalytic to you learning better. And we're also taking the principles of a social network, so giving you an activity feed, your own profile page, the ability to follow other people, to like their comments, and create this whole social activity around learning. Uh, and the results we're seeing are actually that people are really responding positively to this kind of uh, environment. And I think this is a thing that sort of differentiates this new MOOC phenomenon than previous online learning uh, exper experiences. Um, so we've got uh, another great course uh, running at the moment from uh, the Open University, uh, Start Writing Fiction. Uh, and uh, one of the, our, our most uh, popular step for user feedback um, was this one, where we asked um, where nearly 9,000 pieces of individual writing uh, were put uh, against this individual step. So people were asked to do just a short piece of uh, text uh, answering, uh, written in three different ways. Nearly 9,000 responses. Um, so people are really enthusiastically picking this up. And when you go and have a look at one of our courses, if you don't mind, um, I challenge you to look at any of them and look at the comments on any of them. These are not YouTube-type comments. These are not traditional message boards of the type, well, I know that we used to run at the BBC, you know, where you know, Radio 3, Radio 4 message boards were like, you know, peering into the gates of hell. Um, this is really erudite, positive, um, uh, discussion from people all over the world who are loving the opportunity to learn together. Um, and just one of my favorite quotes from one of our learners uh, is this one, because uh, it sort of sums up the approach we're trying to make. I read through the above article, I thought that's interesting, but then I read the comments below and I thought a whole lot more. It's almost as if the basic course is in 2D, but the postings lift it to 3D and really make it come alive. So it feels like there's an opportunity to use the content and the expertise of the academic and the university, but as a way to ignite a discussion and to drive a new form of learning and collaboration in that way. New collaborations and partnerships. Um, so we're proud to have uh, 35 uh, universities now um, as members, uh, we announced a, another um, eight or nine yesterday. Um, we've got uh, about uh, 27 uh, of the top broadly 30, 35 UK universities, including University of Cardiff uh, as partners. Uh, and then we have international partners um, from uh, Oslo, from Holland, from uh, uh, New Zealand, from um, South Korea, from Australia. Uh, from South Africa and we're adding more. But what's interesting is the opportunity to bring together around these um, other cultural partnerships. So we're also partnered with the British Library, British Council, British Museum, who are also creating courses with those universities and bringing their content and expertise to life in new ways. We're also working with the BBC, who are developing uh, four courses with four different universities based around the centenary commemorations of World War I. And we see a particularly exciting opportunity to bring together not only cultural and content owners, media partners, but also corporate partners, because I think many of you who have done online training um, and development within your uh, work environments will be clear, this is an area that is ripe for disruption, for transformation. Uh, and we have many interested uh, companies who are talking to us about using our platform, using our approach, working with our partners to try and transform their own approach to training and development. Uh, BT is our uh, first pilot partner here. Uh, we have professional bodies like the Institute of Engineering and Technology, the ACCA accounting body, who are looking to recognize the courses that we're putting out. So um, we think it's a really exciting opportunity to open up uh, and create these new collaborations between the higher education sector uh, and the cultural and commercial worlds. Finally, it's an opportunity, as in other um, uh, digital transformations, for new data and insight to come in and transform the way 
uh, that uh, teaching and learning is done. Um, so, in the interest of time, I've just put up a quick slide, just some of the insights that are coming out. We're about, we're just over six months into running courses on uh, Future Learn. Uh, and the amount we now know compared to what we were guessing at the beginning um, is incredibly exciting. But we're only just getting started. And I think as in many sectors, becoming a sort of data-driven organization, being able to capture, analyze, and respond in a highly agile and flexible way to incredible amount of, of amount and richness of data that one gets back when you have hundreds of thousands of people learning on your platform is going to be a key strength. So finally, all of this is intended to improve the effectiveness uh, of uh, learning. Uh, we already have nearly 400,000 people uh, studying on nearly, uh, nearly 700,000 courses, nearly 800,000 courses, sorry, from 190 countries. Uh, MOOCs are often criticized that people don't finish them. Well, nearly a quarter of the people who start our courses are finishing them, which is much higher than others in this area, which is, I think, a testament to some of the social features we've built in, etc. But my favorite charts are these, because nearly 90% of people uh, who finish one of our courses rate the experience good or excellent, nearly everyone would recommend FutureLearn to a friend. So we're just getting started, but this suggests we're on the right track. So do me a favor, sign up for one of our courses, have a look at the platform, uh, and be very interested in your comments. Thanks.